I, I do want to get your thoughts on shifting gears a little bit. We heard from President Biden um, that he says he believes it's time for schools to reopen safely. I want to go to what he said in an interview that aired yesterday. Take a listen. I think it's time for schools to reopen safely. Safely. You have to have fewer people in the classroom. You have to have ventilation systems that have been reworked. Our CDC commissioner is going to be coming out with science-based judgment within, I think, as early as Wednesday as the layout, what the minimum requirements are. Uh, Dr. Kellen, what, what, what are the minimum requirements to open schools safely? Yeah, so there are some minimum requirements, and it's a dynamic decision uh, depending on what's going around uh, in the community uh, around you. So you have to understand the new cases uh, that are occurring in your population and the percent of people around you who are newly testing positive. And you have to have the ability to implement um, about five basic strategies. Most of them are pretty easy to do maybe easier said with children in some cases, but things like masking, uh, having social distancing, hand hygiene, appropriate cleaning and disinfecting, and then ideally uh, contact tracing as well. And you do have to pay attention to what's going on in your community in terms of whether there are outbreaks and just um, how penetrating uh, the virus might be where you are. And so you measure things like inpatient beds and ICU beds. Um, but basically, it's about behaviors, right? Stay at home if the kids are sick, use standard precautions, make sure the environment works, just like uh, President Biden said. You got to have things like sinks and soap and hand hygiene. You got to make sure your buses are clean and, and so forth. Um, you have to have certain operations in place, vaccinate as many of the vulnerable staff for sure, and, and the teachers and, uh, and support staff as well have options for children who may be at, at risk, maybe even alternate scheduling. But some of this gets very difficult in some of the old schools that do not have very good ventilation. Many of the public schools are crowded and, and the potential for keeping proper spacing and so forth are gonna be very difficult. Yeah, I mean, you know, I hear I, I hear the idea of giving schools resources now and, and just think back to all the stories that we hear every single year about teachers paying for their own supplies because they can't actually get them from the school district, right? They're, the resources just aren't there. Uh, Dr. Kellen, I, I do want to get your thoughts on the declining cases that we are seeing uh, around the country right now. Uh, are we over the, the worst of it, in your opinion? Um, if there weren't these mutations, we may actually be so long as the country continues uh, on, the, on the right path. I think coronavirus and its variants are going to be with us one way or another for another couple of years um, with vaccines and required boosters, and hopefully it'll become more like a seasonal uh, influenza. There are two things that, that are influencing the, the downward trend. Um, one is that however few people have actually been vaccinated, it is approaching around 10% of the population or, or thereabouts. And, and maybe it's already having an impact um, as we're um, vaccinating very vulnerable groups and now getting into groups that are also spreading the virus. And the other is that maybe the rate of infection, so we're somewhere around 25, 26 million, right? But there is thought that three, four, and even more times that number have already come into contact with the virus. Mm. So we may have a higher rate of immunity than we actually appreciate right. even without the vaccine. Yeah, I mean, the, the fact that it has been present for so long and, and so many people have gotten it uh, could be actually helping the decline. It absolutely makes sense. Emergency physician at Johns Hopkins University, Dr. Gabe Kellen, live from Baltimore. Dr. Kellen, thanks so much for your time. We should note that the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health is supported by Michael R. Bloomberg, founder of Bloomberg LP and Bloomberg Philanthropies. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.